dear students in the beginning classes of income tax we have studied about the various sources of income these sources are broadly classified into five heads namely income from salary income from house property income from business and profession capital gains and income from other sources today let us discuss and learn about the provisions of income tax act in respect of the computation of taxable income from capital gains in layman's language capital gain means any gain or profit arising out of the sale of an asset so according to section 45 subsection 1 of the income tax act any profits or gain arising from the transfer of a capital asset effected in the previous year shall be chargeable to tax under the head capital gains in order to have a better understanding of this topic we have to study the meaning of certain terms such as capital asset transfer and capital gain what is capital asset capital asset means property of any kind held by a person whether or not connected with his business or profession here the term property refers to all kinds of assets movable or immovable tangible or intangible based on its wide meaning and coverage property includes goodwill share of interest in a partnership firm investment in shares of companies license to carry on a business etc for income tax purpose capital assets are broadly classified into two category namely short term capital asset and long term capital asset any asset which is held by the owner for 3 years and above is known as long term capital asset and asset which is held by the owner for less than 3 years is known as short term capital asset in the case of shares and debentures of corporate firms and government bonds if the holding period is 12 months and above the asset can be treated as long term capital asset for income tax purpose some of the capital assets are not considered as capital assets these assets are agricultural land situated in rural areas assets of personal effects such as household furniture vehicles for personal use and wearing apparels except jewelry stock in trade of business etc transfer of capital asset the event which lead to the generation of capital gain and its taxation is the transfer of capital asset therefore better understanding of the meaning of the concept transfer of capital asset is very significant the term transfer in relation to capital asset refers to the sale or exchange or the compulsory acquisition thereof under any law 
there are some transactions which are not considered as transfer for the purpose of computation of capital gains. These transactions include distribution of capital assets on the partition of an Hindu undivided family, transfer of capital assets under a will or gift, mutual transfer of assets between parent company and its subsidiary company, transfer of assets as per scheme of amalgamation of companies etcetera. Types of capital gain. For income tax purpose, capital gains are classified into two groups as long term capital gain and short term capital gain. This distinction is necessary because the tax treatment and rate of tax applicable to long term gain is different from that of short term gain. Any gain arising from the transfer of long term asset is known as long term capital gain and any profit on transfer of short term capital asset is known as short term capital gain. Computation of capital gain. Capital gain is the difference between the sale price or transfer price of the capital asset and its cost of acquisition. Here conceptual understanding about the term cost of acquisition is essential. The expression cost of acquisition in connection with capital asset refers to the price at which such asset was acquired by the owner of that asset. The difference between sale price or consideration for the transfer of capital asset and its cost of acquisition and cost of improvement. There are cases where the assets are acquired by the owner by way of inheritance or as per will of someone or by way of gift. In all these cases, the holder of the asset has not paid anything as its cost price. Therefore, the cost of acquisition in this in case of these assets are considered as the cost incurred by the previous owner of these assets. For example, on the death of father, son got a house property by way of inheritance. Father has paid rupees 25 lakhs to this property 15 years back. If the son sold this property during the current year at rupees 50 lakhs, the cost of acquisition for the calculation of capital gain is rupees 25 lakhs being the price paid by previous owner who is his father. In the case of assets acquired owner before 31st March 1981, the cost of acquisition is its original cost or the fair market value of that asset on 1st April 1981 whichever is higher. For example, X has purchased a capital asset in the year 1975 at rupees 1 lakh and its fair market value as on 1st April 81 was 3 lakhs. If he sells this asset in the year 2014, its cost of acquisition shall be taken as rupees 3 lakh for the purpose of computation of capital gain. Cost of improvement refers to the cost incurred for making additions and alterations to the capital assets after its acquisition. It is necessary to consider the impact of inflation on the price of assets 
while calculating the cost of acquisition and the cost of improvement of long term capital assets. For example, X purchased a piece of land in Bangalore city for rupees 2 lakhs in the year 1990. Due to inflation, there is considerable change in money value. So, value of rupees 2 lakhs in 1990 is not the same as in 2015. While computing capital gain, it is necessary to consider the inflation effect on the asset value. To give proper weightage for inflation effect, we have to find out the inflated price of the asset by way of cost indexation. The cost price of long term assets are subject to indexation with reference to the wholesale price index published by the central government every year. The price index of the year of purchase of the asset and index of the year of sale of the asset are considered for cost indexation. Price indexation is not applicable to short term capital assets and debt instruments of finance such as bonds and debentures. I hope you have understood clearly the meaning of important concepts and terms associated with the computation of capital gain for income tax purpose. That is all for today's class. Thank you.